welcome back to science. This is our try number two because I forgot to turn on the microphone. All right, so here's the scoop for today. We are going to be reading um, about, uh, we have a couple different uh, pieces to read and they're both about matter. And then when we're done reading, you're going to have some questions to do. So adventure on a hot air balloon. The wind is starting to blow stronger, and when you are riding in a basket under a hot air balloon, just 400 feet above the ground, that's not necessarily a good thing. Keith Rodriguez looks to the horizon and squints. He planned to take off from Scotia Downs, a horse racetrack south of Columbus, Ohio, fly a few miles north and land his balloon in a barren cornfield next to his pickup truck. Then... The winds changed. Instead of a light breeze from the south, now Rodriguez's bright red balloon is getting hit by stronger, colder winds heading west. He has plenty of propane fuel in his tank. He probably could ride the wind halfway to Pennsylvania, but that would be dangerous. Rodriguez's choice, choice of landing sites just became very limited. As the balloon switches direction and floats east, everything below becomes a wide carpet of suburban sprawl, big box stores, major highways, and strip malls. Beyond the stores lie forests. The only factor in Rodriguez's favor is that it's early, just after 7 a.m. The highways are filling up with people driving to work, but otherwise the morning is quiet and still. So what's going on is he's in this big hot air balloon. He doesn't have like a steering wheel where he can drive it with a steering wheel. He's kind of at the mercy of where the wind takes him, right? So he's really super limited on how he can steer it and how he can get where he needs to go. So what he does instead is um, he has to figure out where he can land based off of which direction he's heading in. So before you fly in an air balloon, you really need to know what's around you, correct? So he's kind of limited in that he can go up and down, but he can't go side to side. So let's see what happens. Oh boy, Rodriguez thinks if I don't land like now, this could get bad. The balloon has no propeller or engine, so Rodriguez can't change directions on his own. He's entirely dependent on the wind. The only thing he controls is altitude. He does this by changing the air temperature inside the balloon. Sitting on the floor of the wicker gondola are three, li three tanks of liquid propane. The tanks are connected via black rubber hose to two burners overhead. So uh, earlier one of my friends said, Mr. Richardson, why are there two burners? So I want you to be thinking about that as we read. Each burner is nearly as big as Rodriguez's head. Rodriguez turns a knob on one side of the burners. This releases propane from the tank into the heating coil where the liquid propane is heated to a gas and mixed with the air. Then the mixture is ignited by a pilot light. The mixture catches fire and flames leap two feet high into the balloon. I'd be scared that the, the flames would leap too high and hit the balloon, right? I'd be, I'd be terrified of the flames Yeah. All right, it's safe. I'm not saying it's not safe. It would just concern me. Uh, let's see. The balloon rises. Rodriguez has a plan in mind. The flame heats the inside of the nylon balloon. This works on a simple principle. Hot air is lighter than cold air. So how many people have two stories in their house? So if you go up the steps, does it get warmer when you go up the steps usually? Oh, yeah. If you have a basement, and then if you go down, maybe to a basement, does it get cooler usually when you go down oh, yeah. to the basement? That's why my brother moved downstairs because he wasn't cold. So um, back in the day, shh, back in the day, they used to actually dig into like hills and stuff, and they would make houses inside of hills so that the earth would help keep the temperature warmer in the summer are cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. So sometimes they would choose to do that.
Okay, so one of my friends said sometimes uh, some houses you can just see the roof on the top because the rest of the house is inside the ground. Yeah. Yep. So the balloon rises. Oh, he's got a plan. Uh, the flame heats the inside of the nylon balloon. This works on the simple principle. Hot air is lighter than cold air. One cubic foot of air weighs about an ounce. If you heat that air by 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it drops the weight by 7 grams. This means that every cubic foot of heated air inside Rodriguez's balloon can lift 7 grams. Just by himself, Rodriguez weighs 170 pounds, which equals about 77,110 grams. This means he would need about 11,016 cubic feet of hot air just to raise his own body off the ground. This is why hot air balloons are so big. They must trap tremendous amounts of heated air. Rodriguez's balloon is a common size, trapping about 100,000 cubic feet of air. The balloon is 80 feet tall and 60 feet wide. As Rodriguez gives his short burst of flame, the inside swirls in complicated invisible patterns. To drop an altitude, Rodriguez can pull a cord attached to a parachute valve at the top, the very top of the balloon. Since the hottest air of, sits at the top, the release of the balloon's most buoyant air, which makes the balloon descend. So basically what he's saying is, here's our balloon basket. And then here's the hot air balloon. And then way up here on the tippy top, there's what he said is like a parachute valve. And, it, and it's connected to a string, so we can pull this, and this will open up. And it lets out some of the air, and then he can pull it, and then he can let it back out. So this is not like my best drawing ever, but it kind of gives you an idea. So if he pulls on it, it'll open it up and let some of the hot air go out. Um, Rodriguez gives the cord a short pull and the gondola drops a little. I don't have an ultim altimeter, but I and I can't really see anything that's happening inside the balloon, Rodriguez thinks. I have to pilot by feel. Powered by the wind, the balloon is flying quickly now. It's floating over the back wall of the supermarket when Rodriguez grabs a hold of the parachute valve cord and gives it a long, hard tug. The balloon drops quickly. The hot air balloon is sinking but still flying forward. It looks as though it's about to slam into the edge of the supermarket's roof, but it sails over with only about 15 feet to spare. Still, Rodriguez does not let go of the cord. He drops and drops right between the light poles of the nearly empty parking lot. Just a few feet above, Rodriguez releases the parachute cord, turns the knob, so now he's let it go, right? So it closes up the flap and lets it go, um, and he fires up both burners. So he's like dropping like a... He's dropping like a rock, essentially, right? And then he's like, wait, before I crash on the ground, he lets go of it, and then he heats it up so it'll then it'll set him down gently instead of going thunk, right? Um, the steep descent slows. The gondola touches lightly against the asphalt and then drags to a stop. There are only two people in the parking lot standing near the entrance to the store. They look towards the balloon. Their eyes and their mouths are open wide in shock. That was a little closer than I expected, Rodriguez says to himself laughing. I really needed to land quick. Okay, we're going to turn the read works to the next page. And it says, matter is everywhere. Everything around us is made of matter. Your clothes, the tree, even the water you drink. We divide matter into four major categories. Do we use four categories? No, we've been talking about three. Therefore, matter, matter, major categories are called the four states of matter. 
and they are using and they're using liquid gaseous or gas solid and they have tiny particles called atoms wait plasma oh my gosh I skipped a line oh my word Miss Richardson okay and plasma however we will focus on the first three so sometimes you might hear about people giving plasma in relation to blood so um, but we're not going to talk about that right now because they're focusing on the first three whatever the state of matter may be all matter is made of tiny particles called atoms these particles are too tiny to see with the naked eye they're even too small to see with a regular microscope if you line up a billion atoms next to each other they will be as thick as a single piece of a human hair so a million atoms are as thick as a single piece of human hair and you know how thin your hair is right So we can only look at atoms through very powerful tools, one of them being the scanning tunneling microscope. How do we know? We can easily see liquids and solids around us, but most gases aren't visible. We can't see the air around us, but, we, but it is still made of atoms that constantly move around and freely in space. How can we tell? Take a balloon for example. When we pump air into a balloon, it visibly inflates. This means that the gaseous matter is filling the balloon and taking up space. The more air we blow into the balloon, the bigger it gets. Therefore, we can observe the way gas moves around space. In the same way, inflatable pool toys also fill with air so that they can float on water. When we fill the plastic shells with air, the toys take shape. Since air is lighter than water, the pool toys can rest on the water without sinking. And then we can enjoy a sunny day while floating in the pool. It's also the reason why when you have pool toys blown up sitting on top of the pool, the wind can come along, pick them up, and fly them like nobody's business, right? And then you're running after them like a mad person. All right, moving atoms. Atoms are constantly moving. However, atoms move at different speeds within different states of matter. Atoms move more slowly when they are more densely packed. Atoms and solids are usually tightly packed and have less space to move around freely. This means that atoms in most solids move more slowly than atoms in most liquids. The atoms in gas usually move the fastest. Since the atoms usually move more freely in liquids and gases, they can undergo a process called diffusion. Solids can diffuse as well, although it's a much longer process. Diffusion is the movement of particles from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. That's why when you spray perfume in a corner of a room, you will eventually smell it on the other side of the room. The atoms from the perfume diffuse through the air. Because of this diffusion, the perfume scent is spread. That's really interesting, isn't it? So if somebody puts cologne on or perfume on in the morning... And then they walk around. You can usually smell them from a distance away, right? And that's because of diffusion. The scent diffuses through the air. Oh, and you know what? Some people have diffusers in their houses, right? They put oils and water in the house, and then they put it into the air, and then it diffuses or it spreads around the entire room. Identification. We can identify materials according to a variety of properties. Scientists have determined several different measurements to help label materials. Some examples are temperature, hardness, color, and length. Usually these are 
excuse me, used to measure solids like rocks and minerals. However, temperature can be used to measure liquids as well. When geologists study rocks, they often use the Moore's scale of mineral hardness. This scale allows us to, to characterize the scratch resistance of various materials or minerals. A diamond is described as hard because it is extremely difficult to scratch. Scientists can measure hardness with the Moore's scale and compare minerals to other minerals. Scientists always use various methods to group materials together that way. It's easier to study them and compare them. That's another reason why we differentiate between excuse me, liquids, gases, solids, and plasmas. So kind of like what you guys have been doing, because you guys have been um, grouping matter materials together, right? Been spending some time doing that. <clears throat> so your questions say this. Number one. What can be identified according to a variety of properties? Hold on, let me focus. Question number two. What are four examples of properties? Question number three. Use the article Adventure on a Hot Air Balloon to answer questions three and four. The only thing Keith Rodriguez controls in his hot air balloon is altitude. How does he control the balloon's altitude? So you need to tell me how he does that. Question number four. What property does pro of propane does Rodriguez change using the burners? Support your answer with evidence from the text. Question number five, use the articles Adventure on a Hot Air Balloon and Matter Everywhere to answer questions five and six. What is a property of matter that both text addresses? Number six, come up with a definition of property that works for both texts. And that is all of the questions. All right, good luck, and I will talk to you next time for some more science. Bye.